Hello everybody and welcome once again to Galactic Science 2. So, what I'd like to do today is to fin finish off one of those processes. And I've actually transferred the server to a... Well, actually I've transferred Minecraft to a Galactic Science 2 to a separate server. So hopefully that speeds things up a little bit. It also means that things process in the background, but I've got to stand here, otherwise I die. <laughs> Run out of oxygen. Because everything's connected up here, we've got an oxygen bubble, so reasonably okay there. So what I was thinking about doing is to automate the creation of um, cables, insulated cables, because we've done everything else, but just not cables. So let's just get out of here these components. I don't think I need that one. Yeah. So what we've got here is an industrial crucible furnace, and here we've got a metal caster. And I've already got the insulated cable mould in the metal caster here. So what we want to go do is we want to feed these two machines from a... I was going to feed it from this chest, actually. Now, things have got to go in the top, and fluids have got to go round the sides in this particular case. So here I've got a ME glass cable already prepared. Let's put onto that then the ME interface. It's got an ME interface here like that. And then in this ME interface we can put a rule. So the, the one we've got for this, haven't set it up yet, but we'll go and do that in a minute. So here we want to basically take the items out of here, which we can do from the front like this. Those are filters. These are resident servers. Doesn't really matter that much which, which one we use. I've got to put down the cable first of all, haven't I? So what's going to happen here is we've got to take an item duct. It's got to come out of the front of the chest here because that's where we've basically put everything. And it's got to go into the top of this. So we just then need to link it across. So I think the best way is... And I've got to avoid going in front of this, otherwise things won't connect up. So if we just step out one and connect it that way. So then we can push the items out here. And also into here like that. So what we need in here is a filter. So let's set up the filters first of all. We've got two resident filters. Don't really need resident, just they're just there. So the first one here we need to put in rubber balls. Uh, rubber. So we put click that into there like that. So what is that at the moment it's blacklisting. So we want it to be white listed. So we only want rubber to go into this industrial crucible furnace. And the same is here true for this one. So we've got a copper cable and we whitelist it. And then what's going to happen is the rubber is going to get melted, as it were, and converted to liquid, which we need then to feed into the metal caster. So let's do that as well. So this time we need a hardened fluid duct as opposed to an item duct. Good. It doesn't actually need to be hardened. And all we need to do with this one is to simply put a, a servo down. Oops, missed. Try again. Server down here and activate it. So it's always active. Like that. And then out of this we'll have an input. I've got an input bus here, so that'll import the cables. Let's just change the input bus for a second. Let's put something in that's not going to go out like mint. So then it would only import mint. So we can see what's actually happening. So on here all we need to do now is to put a servo. Like that and enable that to be always active so and then here on the f on this uh what i'm also going to do is i'm going to make sure that this has got in blocking mode so it only sticks the items in when it actually needs them so let's go upstairs and have a look at the recipe for this because it's very straightforward of course i think it's already set up in here yes it is so one rubber ball plus one copper cable will make one insulated rubber. So we can take that out of there like that and come down here. You'll see that yellow thing just above my head. I'll show you about that in a minute. It's a bit strange. So all we need to do now is to put this recipe into here like this. So we should then be able to craft cables. So let's go and see if that actually works. Well, 
Well, let's change this to crafting for you because we've got 234 here. So let's craft 10 of these. Start. So that's going to make the rubber and it's going to put everything in here. Into this chest like that. And you'll notice this hasn't gone out. What we can do, of course, we can just disable this one. Set it on high. So we could should see stuff coming into here like rubber balls. Make sure that actually I've been quick enough. That's okay. And that's okay. So the first thing that should happen is we should get the bits and pieces in here. Let's see how that craft is craft is performing. There's one thing I've done putting it on the server. Okay, stored twelve Oh, because it makes them in threes. Stored ten, and it scheduled those. So they should be in this chest. And I don't see them. Why are they not there? That's strange. Let's... Hmm. I don't know. Let's just try this. We've got one rubber ball. And we've got one copper cable. I'll put those into there like that. They stay in there, of course. Then we can activate this. Look at it carefully. You'll see that those two have basically gone across down there. And in here we should get some liquid being smelted. I think it did happen. And here we've got the insulated copper cable made. And then we can just basically import that, just put take removing that like that. Now it's gone. But I'm not sure why the auto crafting didn't work. Let's try that again. So we change the view again. 235, yes. Let's cancel this one here because I'm not sure why it hasn't worked. And this one's crafting processes, but it doesn't look like it's working. Let's cancel that one as well. Those processes don't seem to be very reliable. So let's change this view to craftable and have a look at cable again. Let's try again with 10. So they should come into here and be pushed across. across. I have got an ME interface on there, yes I have. And it's active, that's good. Ah, yes, Ugh. that was uh, not clever, <laughs> but you can see it's working quite nicely now. And there we go. So that completes that particular little process. Of course, I've set this to blocking mode just to be just to make sure that we don't get more in than we should have done. If I hadn't put blocking mode, that would have been fine. Let's have a look at that now. Let's change the view. So we should have 245 yet yeah, spot on. So that's now working, which is quite a good a good advancement, as it were. Because that basically means we can craft everything we need to do most of the rocket bits. Now, here I've got some things to remind myself here. The first thing is another tip from uh, zero life he says that if I put into this here fill up this oh, I don't want to do like that I want to fill up this tank if I fill up this tank here like that I think that's on the wrong one actually oh no I've got no import bus at the back here I need to put an import bus fluid import bus at the back for this to work. This is actually what steel I think. Liquid steel tank. Which is already full. So if I actually remove this server from here like that. What he says is if this tank here is full then the process goes faster. So you can get it takes it out and you can consume more rapidly. So let's just fill it up. So the way to fill it up is simply put the cable out um, the pump 
Plus that hardened fluid duct down here. And then that should then fill up if we put a servo onto this like this. A resident server, I don't really care about them to be honest with you. We've got plenty of resources at the moment. So you see that fills this up. Of course it gets taken and then of course this is going to fill up faster as it as this gets full. And it does look as though it does go faster. So I can then remove this one. Like that. And if I want to, I can put the metal caster down here to make whatever I want to make on these. Now, this one here is slightly interesting. This is a, a metal caster with for resident ender. And in this one, I've got a pan cast. And the pan cast makes ender pearls like that. You could put a gem cast in here as well, or a pan cast. Very easy to make. We've done that before. So nothing exciting there. And that just keeps it full and just makes ender pearls for us. This one here is Enderium, so I can take out 64 Enderium and it makes another set of 64. This is actually small, slightly smaller, this is liquid Enderium as opposed to molten. And there's one for dark steel and that's one for silver. Now the reason I looked at this is because here I've got a tank, a bedrockium tank. If I put, and what I was thinking about doing for this is to put this bedrockium drum down here like that. And have I got an ME storage interface let's put an ME export bus onto this one like that and let's put onto that one some molten iron so let's get a, a, a fluid template or a fluid pattern for molten iron there we go oh I've got a new chest plate I'll have to deal with that I think I have got some metal chest plates somewhere about. Because obviously what I'm saying is if I put things on the server, what tends to happen, let's take those up back here, what, and that'll fill up quite nicely. We've got a, a lot of molten iron at the moment. Far too much in fact, because it's actually filling up all of our fluid resources upstairs. So I'll move that out of the way. I can put that back again, can't I? So we're going to have a look upstairs. We're going to have a look over here. You'll see that everything on this, on the fluid drive, is full. So why x removing some of this like this? This is actually 4K storage. It might free up some of these. So you still see these are actually yellow because they're full. But these ones are red because they're actually completely full. If we go and have a look here what we've got for liquids, you'll see that molten iron, we've got 186,000 buckets of molten iron. So with a bit of luck, that will disappear. Oh, and then we can put a storage interface on that, which we haven't actually got, so let's craft one of those. Ah, yes. What I was doing here was I was going to craft an, an I.O. port fairly cheap recipe. The re recipe for these drives is uh, also not too difficult, so I can do it. Ah. So it's just basically engineering processes and cable, and it doesn't matter if it's coloured or not, and that will produce a drive. They're not too expensive now, because we've got tons of diamonds. And what this allows me to do is to move things around. So if I wanted to move oh, fireworks in the house, so I want to move things into particular uh, storage uh, components I can do. So we've still got five of those, but what I'm hoping for is that all this disappears and frees up one of the slots because we definitely do not have five, 520 fluids. These ones here, which are only 16 buckets, uh, don't count because they're not really here. Yeah. Molten gold, copper, that's two, three for silver. Aluminium 4, Molten Nickel 5, uh, Bedrock Human doesn't count either, because that's downstairs and a separate one. And you'll see these. We don't have anywhere near water. We don't have any that many. So, so that's 
taking its time. Anyway, well, that should clear itself off a bit. Hopefully we get some spare fluid capacity then. That's what this is about. Now this one here is a tank with helium in it, but I don't know where the helium came from. I'll show you where it is. Let's just get a bucket or two out of here. I can't tie it, which I can't again. Got four buckets. I need to get rid of some stuff on me. I think I'm keeping the armor that I'm iron armor, I think is in here. It is. So I can repair this chest plate like this. I'll put it back again. Yeah, if I put it right on. Like that. So I've got some things like iron, these are basically my original tools and stuff like that. And I've seen what I've got on me that I don't need. I don't need the enderium and the ender pulse. Liquid copper tank. I'll keep that with me. Because I've basically not got liquid copper in here. I think what we've got is liquid steel and molten copper. So liquid copper is the special one. Right, listen, I'll show you where the... Uh, it's night time. We'll go for a quick sleep because we can... Don't need to be attacked by mobs. That shouldn't take long, I don't think. But you can actually see it on the mini-map. If you just see that there, you can see some yellow bits. So let's go and tidy up the first one of these. It's actually not dangerous. Let's get a bucket. Actually, let's put down the tank here as well. I think there's two. Try to keep away from the um, cactus. Actually, the four buckets worth in that. But I don't know where they've come from. They just appeared when I went to put this thing on the server, I think. But well, I'm sure that helium's going to be useful. In fact, there's some more. Let's go and pick up the other stuff. Oh, I don't really need to pick up the other stuff. But well, there's also a red... In the middle of the sky up here, there's a redstone lamp. and I don't know where that's come from either. Hmm. In fact, I think my tank got picked up here let's see nope it's gone it might appear at some stage I think these vacuum hoppers won't do it you'll see over here I've got two fountains of helium and I really would like to know where they've come from it's most peculiar As you can see, well, I'll leave those for the time being. I'll do clear those up off camera, as it were. And they seem to have quite a few buckets in. So what I was saying, oh yes, the problems with this running things on the server, you've got to make sure that things actually have a place to go. Look at all this XP here, for instance. So that means my tanks are all full up. I'll just stand down here, pick up all the XP. Because we need XP, and I've got it all for various things. And I want to tidy up the XP, in fact, for that matter. So let's do that in this episode as well. There's some rotting flesh there, which I don't need either. You see, I've added and added tanks and tanks to this thing, and it's still not got enough capacity. So we need to deal with this. It looks very pretty, actually, but uh, a nice lime green. So let's have a look at what we can do for doing this one. So, it's really the one we want is the um, one from Ender.io. What's it called? Let's look for X. No, I'll really clear it off, actually. I think I'll clear off my thing. And it's basically an experience obelisk and an experience rod. So we can make this. This is two solarium and one energetic alloy. Now, I don't oh, we do actually have one. And we need two of these. Well, we don't really need two. 
but two is good to have because you can actually pull stuff off there. So that's the XP obelisk, and where's the obelisk gone to? Because the XP obelisk itself actually requires one of these. Oh, I can do an XP obelisk straight away as well. As you see, that's where the experience rod comes down. And what we can do, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is to basically pipe it. So put the XP obelisk down there, and then we've got a pipe. That wasn't fluid, it will do fine. Let's just put it down. And then we can put a server onto that. Oops, wrong one again. I really will have to watch that. And activate the servo. And this should actually start to go down. As you can see, it's going... Good question. What I want to do is probably better remove this one as well. So the XP obelisk here, I click... I'll remove this out of my hand and use an empty hand on this one. You'll see that the levels are going up in here nicely. And the experience rod, rod you can use for collecting experience as well. So I think you can use it on a tank, shifting. Yeah, if I'm right clicking there, that's taking up XP from. Oh, it's actually, I'm not sure if it's going into the obelisk or into this or not. So if I shift right click it, that's putting it back in again. So that allows you to transport XP around. I think it respects it lets you take it out of a tank and put it in again. So this will be nicely handy, empty hand. So you've now got 55 levels in here. And these tanks are still reasonably full. And these things basically hold tons. So it's a really good way of um, getting rid of your XP. And I don't think it will go below this, which is... Yeah, I can sort that out later on. Now the next thing I would like to do is actually I'd like to see if my um, exploit works for fuel. Because if it does, it will actually save us quite a lot of time. So we've got here's some fuel in here like that. And I haven't got any more tanks. Where are my tanks? One window. Clear that off. Oh, I've got lots of tanks in here with the wrong type. Let's craft ten of those. These are all basically coming from mobs. I don't really need them, but I'll just if I fill them up, like, if I take a few out, I'll fill it up. So I'll come along here, fill this one up. Then we can put it back in and it takes less space. Reduces the number of items being stored. Like that. Right, that's finished. Tanks I wanted, didn't I? We've got ten tanks. So what we would like to do... What have we got? Have we got an ME? Ah, oh, yes, we need to make an ME storage interface, don't we? Fluid storage. I don't have any there, and I don't have a recipe for it. The one I want, I think, is yeah, that's the ME interface, is this one. Which look, we can get two, good. Two's enough for the time being. Clear that off. So we've got an input, and we've got a fluid, that's fine. So I'm actually, I'm and ahhing about these things, to be honest with you. I don't know whether it's a good idea or not. To use the exploit. But all we need to do to get this to work is to take the cable down here like this. Not the dead cable. Connect it in like this, and then we'll just put a input bus on one side. That's export. Import on the front. And then on the top of that, we'll just put the storage bus. Like that. And then, 
I need to put the fuel into this storage bus. So we'll do that first of all, because I've got the fuel in the tank. Uh, I haven't got the tank yet. Ha! <laughs> forgot to do that. Let's go and do that quickly. I made the tank, so I forgot to put the fuel in it. See what I can do with what I'm thinking about. Fuel is this one. We have a reasonable amount of fuel, but it doesn't last very long. What I'm thinking about is removing those um, sterlings, because they may, may or may not be causing lag, I don't know. I'm curious about anything I can do to get rid of the lag. So we right click this again, and then we can shift this into there, shift left click it into there, and then we can put this down like that, but first of all put some tanks on there. We just need two tanks. Like that. And then we can put the fuel down here like this. Oops, too, too near. Let's go back. And that should come in. Ah. It's not gone to where it had wanted it to because it's already in the system. So I'm basically going to have to remove what we've got in the system, which is quite a lot of buckets. I know what to do. I've got a fuel drum here, haven't I? 256. Just let me look if actually we've got any spaces now. No, it's still, it's still red. So, um, fuel. So we've got 1,000. I don't think we've got enough tanks for 1,000. How much have we got now? Still 1,000. Hmm. What I should do is to remove the fuel from one of these cells. Now this is where this comes in handy. Let's remove this reservoir. They're in the way anyway, and I don't think we're ever going to be using them in this pack. Let's put the Emmy into this thing down here, this, uh, this down here like that, and have a look at it. So here we can actually import and export cells. So if I come along here and have a look, we can take one of these cells out of here and put it into this thing. And what's it doing? doesn't actually tell me what it's transfer direction was the 64 I don't really want the 64k one I really want the one for the um, if I do it anything I'd be sensible to do it with fluid tanks wouldn't this for the 4k ones now this actually puts it into the system doesn't it so I can't see what's in it so I use the chest here let's take this out of here and put this into that and then we can have a look at the top of this chest and we can see that we've got iron but we haven't got any fuel, so that's okay. Let's put the let's put the iron. Let's put this one back into here. Let's take it out. Of course, we're going to take it out. Put it in. What I'm doing is I'm actually looking for the one with the fuel in it, aren't I? And here it is, one thousand fuel. Right, and now I've got the fuel out of here. Let's go downstairs. Ah, I haven't got the fuel out. I've still left it in the system, of course, haven't I? Because it's in here. If I take this out of here like this, then we should be able to do that again. But I've got a bit of full inventory. Doesn't matter. I just put the chests away. I don't need those on me at the moment. A little bit of fuel in here. Maybe I just need. To, oh, I can't. Now, what's going to happen this time? And sure enough, that is actually working. Now, what's so curious about this 
Let's take this out of here. This is fluid duct, isn't hard on fluid duct, isn't it? Let's fill this up. I need to go down like that. And then remove this connection here because we don't want it feeding around in a loop. And then putting into this the a servo, if I've got one, which I have, good. Like that. And activating it. So that fills up this tank. And itself fills itself up. So basically that's all we need to do. So now, if we take this here and remove this, because this was the export bus which we had for fuel, let's remove this now. What I'm curious about is, does this actually keep up? Don't, oh, I do need these, because that's, <laughs> that's the actual source, isn't it? So let's just connect that back up again. But let's move the connection this time. Where should we take it? That'll do. That enables everything. So we can then basically bring this. Oh, in the right place. That's amazing. So we can bring this along here like this. Remove that connector there. Put the servo on here. And activate that. So that's now actually, <laughs> that's basically f keeping that up. And does this work? Let's have a look. Well, it's full of power and the fuel is coming in. Let's see if I turn this thing on. And the way I turn it on, of course, is just to get another. Oh, I havenven't got one with me. Let's go and get one. So we need a cry stabilized flux duct. Just one will be fine, I think. Let's go around here. I also thought I could don't have to have these cables here. I could simply use a, a router, an item router, which will push over all the items in here, like that. So let's have a look now. This should be producing loads of power. It's producing loads of power. And the fuel is actually going up. So that little uh, trick is enough to power this thing. What's the speed it's coming at now? It's hard to tell from here. I think you can see it from the front better. But I'm not sure how to read these two meters, I will be honest. But it should be getting into that core as much as possible. Because the input one is this, isn't it? I think this is connected to this one. So it says 421.6, but I don't really know what it means. And this one, energy pylon. That's, I think that's full. <laughs> well, there you are. Another episode. Uh, next time, I think I'm going to, well, between episodes anyway, I'm going to speed up the generation of Bedrockium because that's the only thing I know at the moment that's actually causing us problems. It's the Bedrockium. The rest of it we should be okay with. So until next time, I'm going to say bye for now.